Wednesday, happy new year. I am so happy to be back. We had a nice little break over the holidays from Banter with Beth, but I'm really thrilled to be back with everybody today. So good morning. Hi, Ariel. Nice to see you this morning. It's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a great time for everybody right now. 2021, we have to look for, the, we can all look toward the future. So much is going on of course, with the virus. I'm in California. It is, uh, it is dire here in Southern California. So we are sheltering in place in the biggest, baddest way. And my heart goes out to everybody who is dealing with anything uh, regarding the virus on any level, whether you're a frontline worker or if you're suffering from the virus or someone that you know is suffering from the virus. Um, so with that in mind, we now do have a vaccine, so there's hope for the future. Uh, Georgia's turning out to be pretty darn good right now so far, so good, fingers crossed. Let's stay, let's stay the course in Georgia, right? And, uh, and we have hope for a beautiful winter and, and then walking into springtime. So, oh, my guest has joined. I'm so excited this morning we are, we are joined by Elizabeth Rome, of course, of Law and Order fame, and I'm, I've been on her show a couple times, which is so great, Lunch with Liz, and I'm going to bring Liz on. Here we go. Good morning. Here she comes. <laughs> Let's see if the connect. Yay! <laughs> Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, how you doing? You know, I'm doing all right. I think that the, 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 the results in Georgia are putting a little pep in everybody's step today. Right? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. It was so funny. We decided this morning, like, let's go for a walk. And of course, it turned out to be garbage truck day. So <laughs> we're, just, we're trying to go for a walk and the dog is petrified by the garbage trucks. And what can you do? So we said, okay, we're not walking on Wednesdays. But um, but we're just so excited to get out of the house and, and kind of, of you know. Course. Kind of, of, of course. Of course. Right. I, I mean, seriously, I, I'll never forget the morning I was walking to the beach because I live here in Venice and I, it was, you know, the morning after the election and I was just walking the dog and still sort of reeling from, you know, what could be what, you know, the, the terror of all of that. And I suddenly heard people screaming and music playing. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, my God, Biden won. <laughs> you know, it was just um, anyway. Yeah. There's yes. a lot of joy if you're a Democrat. Um, definitely. For sure. Most definitely. And I really do believe, I have to believe and hope that, uh, that the Democrats will do the right thing, that we're not going to swing so far left that we lose half the country. That's just not who our country is and what we're about. It's not who I believe. No. The, no. The, the real Americans are not either at either end. We really are in the middle, and we really do want the best for everybody. So Absolutely. I have to, have to believe that, have to. How was your New Year's? My New Year's was beautiful. Um, very still in the bubble, in the pandemic bubble here in LA and spent it with my best friend and her family nice. and, um, and my boyfriend. And it was just very quiet and easygoing and, you know, not that much going on, um, but still lovely, celebratory. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, life is really simple these days. It's funny, we've talked so much about, you know, um, the simplification of your life and really identifying who is significant, what is significant, what your true purpose is. And I've had you on my live several times or twice talking about your true purpose and with your mother, you know, with your mother, with your family story, really, and, you know, the documentary you're making. So, <laughs> Right. Yeah, I feel that's I've gotten really dialed into that during the pandemic as awful as it's been. It's uh... well, so let's talk about what you've been doing because you've been directing, which is so exciting that you're directing for the first time. And um, I love that, that Lifetime has given you this opportunity to direct, you know, a, a, a piece. But but what a piece. Oh, my gosh. Let's tell everybody about what you've directed. It is a, it is huge. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. Um, yes. Yeah, so the movie is called Girl in the Basement. And next week, we're going to announce what the air date is going to be. So everybody that's here with us, please just pay attention or I'll be posting when it's going to be coming out in February. 
but it's um it's inspired by true events based on the elizabeth fritzel story so if you happen to know a lot about true crime which i do being a law and order alum i i happen to to be interested in things like that right. so the elizabeth fritzel story was um in austria in 2008 a woman it was revealed that she had been um she had been put in the basement of her family home by her father she had been imprisoned for 24 years and he had um raped her for those 24 years and made seven children and you know seven. had this seven children had this very uh, complex lie going with the wife upstairs about you know how these children kept getting dropped on the doorstep and they raised three of the incest children and um a very, very dark, hard, hard story to tell, but a true story and one that is important because generational abuse and sexual abuse, physical abuse, you know, it, it you know, it, it's eradicated when we face it and have these difficult conversations, which movies can and TV can do for us. I mean, Precious was one of my favorite movies and it was so hard to watch. And oh my I gosh. hope that this movie is, is, is challenging to watch, but can make an impact. Right. Right, for sure. I mean, this story, I was reading up on it, um, you know, in preparation for today, and I am blown away by the layers of complexity of this story, considering that the wife was living up, the mother of the imprisoned daughter, who's in the basement, is living upstairs, and other siblings were living upstairs as well. Is that correct? Right, yes. Yeah. So there were, there were many children, um, and they were living upstairs with their mom and dad, and some of these incest children were then raised upstairs as well um three of them and elizabeth fritzel lives in anonymity in austria with all of her children um wow. Wow. and she is a survivor and honestly i mean to tell such a dark story at such a dark time globally may seem um sort of counterproductive but i felt actually it's not a dark story the content of what happened to her is horrific, but she is a hero and we sure. all need more heroes. And she, she's living and breathing in Austria and surviving and trying to thrive. And, you know, I, I think of her all the time because of course the movie is a testament to her, to her heroic nature, which Absolutely. I hope is inspiring for everybody, you know. Have you had a chance to meet her? No, no. I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know that that's something um, she's looking for i think she just right. wants to move on with her life um but i have i have done true stories before about very difficult content as an actress and i've gotten some i've particularly got an email in the last movie i had come out called sleeping with danger from the woman that i portrayed saying that she was very worried about the movie she'd heard about it and she was really <laughs> happy with the portrayal so you never know you never know I hope you never so. do. I mean, I think actually right now is the perfect time for your movie to come out because particularly with the pandemic, my understanding is that domestic abuse and domestic violence is, yeah. that, you know, I don't know if it's an all time high, but it has certainly risen during the pandemic. And so listen, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of family dramas happen, a lot of friendships, a lot of family, um, you know, deep relationships have been challenged right now. You know, some right. have gotten stronger, some have broken apart through the stress and the trauma right. of what we're going through. And I would just, you know, I would advise everybody um, to, you know, try to be gentle with themselves because no, no one feeling is permanent. You know what I mean? Right. I think we'll be moving through this um, and it'll give us a chance to reflect on everything that happened to us during this time. Absolutely. And we do always have to look for silver linings. You know, when I think about my mom and her six siblings and the reason that we've made the film, Would You Hide Me, is certainly not to negate what happened to them in the past, but there is a silver lining. There, there are people that are survivors and that look toward the future and say, I'm here and I'm going to make the best of a terrible situation and, and find ways <coughs> even to give back, you know? Right. Um, not everybody uh, turns inward and spirals down. You know, people do rise to the occasion and uh, not everybody, but you know, sometimes the circumstances are beyond your control. And, but sometimes when you come out to the other side, you have a choice. We all do have a choice when we come to the other side of any kind of conflict to mm -hmm. say, I'm gonna live and carry this baggage around with me forever, or I'm gonna move forward. And it sounds like that's what she's done, which is remarkable. 
Yeah, and I think as filmmakers and storytellers, which we both are, you know, um, that's, you know, our gift, you know, is to is to highlight m stories of inspiration. Um, yes, and the next yeah. movie I'm trying to make is about the Sandy Hook shootings oh, and wow. Scarlett Lewis's son, Jesse Lewis, who was murdered. And we actually just uh, passed December 14th, the, the anniversary for Sandy Hook. And but again, Scarlett Lewis has taken her pain and her agony and turned it into an opportunity to create a movement of love called the Choose Love Movement. You can go to chooseLoveMovement.org. Um, and so I think I think that's what we do as artists. We tell stories that we hope, um, even if there are aspects of degradation and pain and despair in them, you know that we we want them to to inspire hope. Right. You know that you can survive and you can make it through anything and you know no matter what you've been through you know you have a second chance you have a second chance every day of your life to right. start again right yes for sure so tell me about some other things that you have been participating in you're you're directing for sure but my experience of you is so philanthropic you know i mean you have your hand in so many different causes and um you just like you're just a person who just pays it forward constantly i was just raised by i was raised by a hippie so she told me it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when and what are you doing to help other people and if you're not right. spending 50 percent of your time trying to make an impact um then you've missed the whole point you know and I, I created something called the Respect, the Respect Project, which are a series of conversations. We're a nonprofit organization now, and we want to inspire conversation that's based in respect because of the need for deep communication, not only between us as loved ones or peers or friends or colleagues, but also just globally. So wherever there's conflict or intolerance or, um, or you know, anything that needs to be resolved. I'm leading conversation. I hope that um, leans into solutions through more mutual respect and listening. And so every conversation that we have, for instance, we have one January 17th on giving and generosity, and we're going to be highlighting a few nonprofits. One is, um, one is, well, St. Jude's is not a nonprofit, but by, um, you know, in the sense that that's a, a hospital that gives if your child has cancer, and you, you have to go to St. Jude's, you will never have a medical bill for your, the entirety of your experience there. And so we'll be talking about that and um, a few other organizations. But yeah, I, I think philanthropically highlighting nonprofits and then with every conversation we have, we have a commitment to give back financially to a nonprofit. So the Respect Project is um, about elevating and creating the conversation for people who are trying to change the world and themselves. Amazing. That's amazing. That's incredible. And so people can go to therespectproject.com. They can go to respecttalks.com. Um, but we are now a nonprofit and we are building a fiscal sponsorship program. So people can also donate and so forth. And that's just getting up and running. I'll be keeping people posted about that. Okay. So respect, respecttalks.com. Yeah. Good, good. That's great for people to know about. Awesome. I love it. So you and I, we share um, something in common, too, in this German heritage that we have. And we do. I'm fascinated by that. Tell, tell us about your story, your family's story in Germany. And were you born in Germany and then emigrated to America? Tell, tell, tell us then. I was. I'm actually going to tell you a little bit of a side story, which I think you'll really um, appreciate. So I was born in Germany. My dad is German. Um, and my mother, who has passed away already 10 years, um, she and her best friend of 35 years married brothers, um, if you can believe it. In their third marriages, they married brothers. Oh, um, my gosh. Both third marriages, two, too? A D Dutch family. The, the brothers were Dutch. They were Jewish. Um, they, they tried to escape Holland um, and got captured and put into concentration camp as children, as boys. And because the Dutch queen was so adamant about, you know, um, not, you know, her people not being, uh, you know, she was, she was very protective and very outspoken. And if you touch my Jews, oh, there'll be a wrath of God upon you, you know? So that yeah. is how they survived. 
And um, my my mother married Peter, my aunt Nancy married Olaf, and these children are survivors of the Holocaust. And um, I remember uh, being at my aunt Nancy's house and we were reading the family history of, of that through the perspective of Peter and Olaf's mother. Mm. And much like your family story, I have a family story of survive, so survival in the Holocaust, but which I've never shared with you. But my Aunt Nancy started to cry when I was reading this whole book. And she said, I never thought in my lifetime I would have a German read this story to me. And I thought it was so profound because I'm not Jewish. Right. But I have, you know, a Jewish stepfather, a Jewish stepmother, a Jewish aunt. You know, I have so many, um, you know, Jewish people in my family. But um, it was profound to her, you know, because of the history that, I don't know, it was a very raw and tender moment in my family. Um, so yeah, so on both sides, I have survivors and I also have my father's side of the family, which um, um, my dad, my grandfather was an architect. My father immigrated to the United States before I was born. And uh, I was only born there because my mom who's American and he went back for one year to deal with his citizenship. Amazing. Have so? Do you still have dual citizenship? I do. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That's something that I need to do. I've been thinking about, you know, applying for since I'm eligible to receive it, and it, there's something uh, about it that feels really right. And it's, it's, it's take. It's like taxes. It's just taking the time to do the paperwork and <laughs> make sure. Listen, I, I I just want to be a citizen of the world. After we went through this pandemic, or as right? we went through this pandemic, I was like, I want to be a citizen of Canada. Germany, all of them, line them all up. I want to, you know, I wasn't sure I wanted to be here for sure. Right, right. No, I agree. Half my family's in, in Canada, the Canadians, and I feel the same way. I'm like, I can, is there any way that we can have citizenship there too? And especially with the borders <laughs> closing, and it's, a, it's just a wild, wild time for all of us. The other thing that you've done during the pandemic in particular that really is paying it forward in an extraordinary way is Lunch with Liz. Yes, is, I, I mean, it's, it, you're <laughs> such an inspiration with what you've done. And there are so many people, there are so many viewers here today. I'm so grateful that everybody's showing up. And, you know, thank you, Liz, for bringing your viewers over here to Banter with Beth. You are the reason I am doing Banter with Beth. Hands oh. down. You are. You are the reason. <laughs> I mean, you. you invited me on your show. And it was so much fun. And I was in such a place with Would You Hide Me of needing to raise awareness about the film, raise money about the film. I was like, well, this seems like a great platform. Let's do it. And I asked our mutual friend, Carrie, if it would be okay. And she said, yeah, you know, let me check and sure, go for it. Um, so it's, it's been a really fun, wild ride doing it. But tell us about how you started Lunch with Liz and what it's morphed into and what your plans for, for the future are. Well, I guess much like the Respect Project, you know, I believe and know that we all suffer. You know, we all feel our own isolation. We all have our own story, our own narrative. And the only way we feel safe in this world is if we feel heard and seen and, you know, part of something. And so communication is key. And that's why I created the Respect Project. But I thought as we sort of got locked up, I thought, Oh my God, you know, I, how am I going to maintain connections with human beings and, and what can I do to be of service to people, um, my fans, my friends, can I create a community of, of inspiration during this time? And for the first three months of the pandemic, I did it every day at one o'clock. I had a different guest and, and, you know, honestly, I mean, it should have just been called FaceTime with friends because either they were my friends or they were friends of friends. Right, and right. it was just a way to build a community because not everybody has a child. Not everybody has a spouse. So many people are alone and are suffering. This pandemic is continuing to go on, which is why I've continued to do lunch with Liz. Now I do it, you know, sometimes twice a week. Um, I think people have wanted me to continue doing it, but... At this point, I've loved it so much that eventually I think I'm going to get off of Instagram and I'm going to do it as a podcast because right on. Cool. the spirit of Lunch with Liz now is no bullshit conversation from the heart about heartfelt matters 
with people who are inspiring, which, you know, as we all struggle with this human experience, which we all do, um, we need to be inspired by each other. We need to throw each other, you know, a hand and, and, and pull people forward. And I think we do it by being revealed and revealing and honest. And um, I hope that the conversations have been like that. For anybody that's been suffering during the pandemic, if I bring you into a conversation and I hope it's inspired people to say, you know what, I have something, I have a dream, I wanna do this, I wanna make an impact. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's come on has had a really positive um, story to tell. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. And I know, I can see what, what people are saying here on the feed. They are so grateful that you've done it and they love it. And they definitely want you to continue on. So I'm excited for you. And I hope that you do do the podcast and like, you know, go, you. go, go bold or go home. What's the expression? Go big or go home. big or go home. Go, 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 go home. <laughs> yeah. So let's so just now like actor to actor. I mean, I miss acting so much. I'm, I'm guessing you do too. Do you miss it? I'm definitely ready to get back out there and work. You know, it's, um, it's sometimes hard, I think, to contain all the emotion you have inside of you um, as a human being, but as an artist, you know, when you know you have that outlet of expression, yeah, I'm very ready to go back to work. I'm very For sure. ready to get back in the saddle. Definitely. And so as an actor, you've had an incredible career. What's the one thing that you haven't done yet that you want to do? Well, directing was what I wanted to do, and now I'm doing it, and that's really becoming a big focal point for me. Um, but I do think about theater. I think about doing a play in New York or London, you know, trying to get on the stage just because I feel like the friends of mine that have done theater that are movie actors, TV actors, they're really the best. You know, frankly, they're just really the best, like Sam Waterston or... Bradley Cooper, or, you know, they're really, they, they, their whole game changed once, you know, because of the theater and doing, you know, being on the stage. And so I think, I think I would like to do a play at some oh, point. Oh, that's soon. awesome. Good for when you. We get, when we get theater back, which we don't have for now. Which, right, and which we desperately need. You know, there is no question that I think of the arts, the hardest hit have been theaters as well as um, musicians who tour. You know, all the festivals are closed and there are no live concerts, so to speak. So it's, it's, it's tragic and it really is up to Hollywood. We have to do whatever we can to nurture that. There was a great article the other day, I think in the New York Times or the Washington Post, how the theater is the incubator for amazing television, for amazing film. And it always mm -hmm. has been. And it always will be if we can keep it alive and keep the flame, yeah. you know, stoked. We need to give it like a huge injection of funds into these theaters to stay open. Lord knows yeah. how they're going to close, you know, by the end of the pandemic. Oh, I don't know. I, I hope not. I mean, yes, I, I think if, if anybody can do anything to give right now, you know, whether it's, you know, ordering food from a restaurant that's shut down, but they're doing yeah. takeout, whatever people can do to support each other. Yeah. I mean, people are suffering and struggling. And I, if I hear about one more person getting COVID that I know and love or losing a job that I know and love, um, it's, it's more than anybody can bear, really. But yeah. I, I don't know. I hope that we'll be moving out. The vaccine is here, so I just hope we'll be moving out of this soon in the next couple of months. Right, right. Well, I want to make sure that everybody really understands all the different incredible things that you have been doing certainly since the pandemic but before the pandemic and you're just somebody you like you just don't leave any grass under your feet you know you just keep <laughs> going and going and creating and creating whether it's something artistic for your soul or whether it's you caring so much about other people's souls and like respect talk sounds incredible can people Thank actually re-watch some of the respect talks is that something that i i'm going to start posting them on a youtube channel so people I, as everybody who follows me knows i'll post on stories just to keep everybody posted about the talk on january 17th which is about giving and generosity january 30th i think it's at 11 in the morning um is on keeping the faith um, and there'll be, you know, one or two a month, every month for the rest of the year. So um, you can also go to respecttalks.com and you can see a little bit of what we've been doing. Um, but yeah, I, I tend to want to create the things that I need 
You know, I create mm -hmm. what I feel I, I need to get through life. And I, I, you know, and I think being a human being takes tremendous courage, um, tenacity, uh, decisiveness. And um, so I try to create things that I, that would inspire me, I guess. That's beautiful. That's awesome. That's so great. So I'll go back to my question from before then in terms of something that you haven't done yet that you want to do. What about in terms of a character, a role that you would like to play that you haven't played yet? <laughs> That's <a> funny. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe like, you know, something appear like a Viking or like, you know, something like really like Game of Thrones, like something like that. I've never Ooh, done that. Most of my yes. characters are based in like, either you know, the last, you know, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 years, you know, um, I think that would be incredibly fun to do something like that. Um, You'd be amazing at that. You'd be I know, you know, that. just just braid my hair all up and yes, hers and yeah. Yes, I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, I hope you make that happen. I think everybody would really enjoy that. Especially you. Have you seen Wonder Woman 2 yet? Or what do they call it? Wonder Woman I have not. I have not. But I would have loved to have played one of the, whatever they're called, gladiators. I can, or... Yes. Yes. I can definitely see you in there. And then what did Joel and I just watch? Um, Bridgerton. We just, so that's not, mm. you know, Warriors, but it's certainly Regency, you know, restoration or uh, costume drama. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's something that I just love that period. All those, you know, the costumes alone in that production are. Right, you know, the turn of the century, right. Yes, yes. I mean, yeah. it's 17th century. And so it's even more glorious. And I think, yes. I think probably like two thirds of their budget went to the costumes. It was really incredible. Just beautiful. I'm sure I'm actually, I'm actually developing a film that um, I will shoot in Scotland based on a famous female painter in 1911. Oh. So I'll get, I'll get a chance to, you know, I don't know if you saw the crown, but I'll get a chance yes. to sort of, you know, do the, do the Scottish landscape with some great period costumes oh. with my friend, my friend Jeff Garner, who uh, has a, a sustainable fashion company called Prophetic. Everybody should check him out. Very interesting guy. Cool. That's very cool. Well, I definitely want to hear more about that because that is right up my alley. That just sounds like so much fun. And of course, my husband will be like, Scotland, we're going to Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I need to, I need to come visit you guys in Ojai. I'm, I love it there. Yeah. Please. We, we love it here. It really is our Ojai bubble. My sister said to me, she's so funny. She said to me yesterday, because she's here visiting, and she said, so when the pandemic's all over, do you think you're going to kind of look around and say, what have we done? <laughs> oh, I because said, so, you moved there during the pandemic? Right, right. I mean, we still have a house in LA, but it's on the market. We're selling it so that we can stay here in Ojai. And we'll get an apartment probably in Venice or Santa Monica or something like where, that. Where is your house you're trying to sell? In the Palisades. If anybody wants to buy a house in the Palisades, it's on the market. It's Send me the <laughs> listing. I will. I definitely <laughs> I'd love to will. see it. For sure. For sure. It's got a pool. It's beautiful. View of the ocean. All those things. Perfect. But, yeah. I love it. We, are, we have charmed lives, you and I. We have very charmed lives. We get to do what we want to do. And that is a blessing. It is such a blessing. I just want to say thank you to everybody here that's sort of... Um, you know, I, I, I want to say thank you to Brie for mentioning the movie Ghost Image. Thank you so much. And also um, I see uh, M.I. Hassani6464 talking about the last chip. So thank you guys. I loved making both of those projects. I appreciate that. It's so nice. I am so grateful that you brought your viewers over here to banter. I hope you guys continue to show up to banter and maybe hit a little like button or whatever and share it. But Liz, I cannot wait till we get a chance to get together and hang out and go for a hike and bring the dogs and I love it. All that. It's been so much fun getting to know you over the last couple months. For me, the pandemic, the hardest part about the pandemic is not meeting new people. I love meeting new people. And this has been like, you're, this has just been, you're such a breath of fresh air and you're so inspiring and committed to the work that you're doing on every level. I really want to make sure people know to check out the girl in the basement and you'll be, you'll be letting people know 
When? It comes out in February. I'll let everybody know right. the date. Next week, we're going to do a press release. And um, okay. and yeah, I think that's part of why doing the, the chats, the live IGs have been so great because at a time of great isolation, um, not only with my friends, but with uh, my guests, with my fans, um, I've really gotten to know a lot of new people even during a time of tremendous isolation. So I, I agree with you. I love people and I want to connect. And we've had this you know, in this terrible inability to, to, to connect with, you know, more than just our intimate people in our lives. So I do right. love doing lunch with Liz. I'll continue doing them as well. Oh. So everybody can follow and see who's coming this week. I've got Jake Etheridge coming. Who's one of the stars of my movie. He's super sexy Nashville singer. I'm sure I can get him to sing for us. So you guys can check it. him out. Very cool. That's so exciting. Good. And that will be, when is that tomorrow or next Tuesday? Uh, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Perfect. Tomorrow, 1 p.m., Lunch with Liz, right here live on Instagram. That's good. Thank and then you. I want to remind people to go to respecttalks.com, and you can make Thank a donation you. there and really support Liz's nonprofit. It sounds like an incredible project. Thank you, Beth. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for coming, and have a great day. Um, and just welcome. continue to fight, fight your good fight, Beth. You've got a beautiful movie you're making. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on. It's an honor to have you and to be continued. To be continued. All, all roads lead ahead. <laughs> yes, for sure. Happy, happy new year. Happy new year. Bye guys. Okay. Bye. 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 So Liz is amazing, as you can see. I am so grateful that she joined us today. And um, thank you guys for, for showing up. Thanks for coming on Banter today. Happy New Year to everybody. We'll be back on Sunday with Ariel Beth Fink, who has written this fabulous one-person play called My Shik's a Boyfriend. And then next Wednesday, we have Dr. Michael Lawton who is the president and CEO of Barrow Neurological Institute. And he's going to be talking about bravery and courage. And if anybody knows about bravery and courage, it would be a neurosurgeon. <laughs> so I'm really thrilled to have Dr. Lawton come on. Um, please join us 10 o'clock this Sunday, 10 o'clock next Wednesday. And, and our guests will continue throughout the month. And please visit wouldyouhideme.com. You can also visit our YouTube channel which um, is under Beth Lane Film. And we have playlists there of our sample reels, our 60 Second Doc series, where I think we're dropping another 60 Second Doc this Friday. And, um, and then we have the replays of Banter with Beth. So check it out. Thanks everybody so much and happy, happy new year. Bye.